run us back in the time to a time uh, of the most messed up promoter you ever dealt with. Oh, dope <laughs> and dope boys, hands down. He said dope that dope real. boys. <laughs> yeah, they offered to pay us in cocaine. They didn't have our money, so they offered to pay us in cocaine. Wow. And like they like pull guns out the whole the whole walk, man. Like for the people who don't know, all right. So like with comedy in the south, you can't perform for the same audience every week and make money every week. Okay. It's not enough black rooms. It's not enough white rooms. You just perform for whoever got it. So you might be at a casino performing for old people. Then you might be doing some nigga family reunion. Then you're doing dope boys. Then you're doing a bunch of white folks and make or some shit. Mm -hmm. So, so what what the dope boys used to do was if they if like if the feds took their shit or you know they got you know somebody jacked them or whatever, they would do a comedy show to get money for to Caparia. So they would pre-sell tickets for a month, take the pre-sale money buy the re-up, flip that, pay the comedians with the profit, and then they back in the game. Mm. So it's a simple way. It's a re- they do it with rap shows sometimes too, but yeah, it's yeah, an yeah. easy way to get I your money back. That. I know all about okay. it. So it's a it, it works for as long as you fucking flip the brick before the fucking show. We get to the show, these niggas ain't sold the brick yet. Mm. So they ain't got our money. They can't refund the tickets to the crowd because they done bought a brick with the fucking money. So they they pull us all backstage. Hey man, hey hey, look, hey man, hey look, nigga, we we and the nigga talked to us credit. The nigga said it was a Saturday night show. It was in Dothan. It was a Saturday night show. He go, the nigga gonna come up here Sunday, nigga. We'll send you a Western Union on Monday, nigga. Just do the show for us though. We don't want to fuck up our good name in the community. So. Some of the comedians was like, nah, I ain't gonna do this shit. And I was an opener. I was only supposed to make a hundred. And two of the headliners backed out. And so it was just me and the other comedians. And this nigga was like, look, man, let me just put it to you like this. Ain't nobody else leaving this motherfucking room till they walk out that bitch and do a show. And so he had this nigga named Oak. Oak pulled out a fucking Glock and this nigga just sat by the fucking door and was like, Y'all can do the show. You can get your money on Monday. Or if you want, you can go over there and pinch you a little bit off the brick. <laughs> and you can take that with you and flip it yourself. <laughs> you think, and this is hey. why I feel bad. This is why I feel bad telling this story because yeah, yeah. these were honest niggas. Like they were honest dope boys. These niggas brought the brick. Like they showed it to us. Like they wasn't running game. Yeah. It's like Nigga, we, we have a situation. The man who was supposed to come by the dope did not show up tonight. He is coming tomorrow. Would you mind if we... So I lied and act like my mama was on the phone, stepped outside to make a phone call. Nigga, I hopped in my car. And did. You got a hell of a there. Gone. Gone. Talk You're really good at that. Somewhere. You're really good, my bad. You're really good at getting out the way because I heard that Jay Prince story too, how you booked the ticket the same damn day. <laughs> Listen, you're really good at getting out the way. You, for some odd reason, it's, it's, you're really good at that. Nigga, I'm not the confrontational type. I, <laughs> I ain't finna just be fighting just to fight. If, if we gonna fight, it's to the, in my brain, it's to the death. So if it ain't worth murder, it ain't worth the confrontation. Yeah. So it ain't worth going back and forth over a little bit of money. That Jake Prince shit, man. I thought that nigga was going. Did you see the Sway interview? Oh, that? I saw it. I, I actually saw it multiple times because I was laughing Bruh. at. Bro, I was Jake laughing. Prince at. was real about that shit. The the long and short for people who don't know the story, <laughs> uh, when I used to do prank phone calls, my pranks got hot in Houston because Chameleon Air was putting my shit on mixtapes. So this record label in Houston reached out to give me a, um, a album deal to do a prank phone call CD where I only prank call celebrities. One of the people on the sheet was Jay Prince. So I fly to Houston to the studio to start the album. I landed like 10 in the morning. We called Jay Prince. I started talking shit to Jay Prince. I said, nigga, this is where he got mad. This is where I knew I was out of line. I said, nigga, ain't none of these rap a lot artists hot. I ain't sold no rap a lot shit. Come to my record store and pick up this garbage ass music. Jay Prince just goes, nigga, where you at? 
<laughs> I said, what? Where you at? I want to talk to you man to man. Where you at? And the dude, the engineer, that was, yeah, that's the name, the sound engineer that was yeah, in the room. Yeah. He started shaking. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is for real. So the producer got on the phone. He goes, hey, Jay, it's us. We were just prank phone calling you over here at the studio. This is Roy. He's a comedian. It, it, no harm, no foul. And Jay went, oh, you over there with Harold? I know exactly where you at. Hey, man, turn the car around. And so I figured at that point, Jay Prince was coming to beat the shit out of me. So I, nigga, I bounced. I went back to the fucking airport. I never even went to the hotel. You booked the same day and you were supposed to be there for three days, right? I was supposed to be there three days doing prank phone calls in the studio. You left that day. same day. How, how many I hours were the you same there? Day. I was in Houston, maybe like three hours total. Wow. Without baggage claim. How much was that ticket? Shit, they paid for it. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> they want to me down. You said, man, get me the hell up out of here, bro. bro. I went back to the airport. I was like, yeah, I got a return ticket. Can y'all just move me up to today? They said, it's a $50 change fee. I said, bitch, you got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, and I told that story on Twitter. Somebody was like, imagine a man being scared of another man. You can call me a bitch nigga all you want. I'm not finna get stomped out over no goddamn joke. <laughs> that ain't what I'm here to do. You ever have people want to fight you? Leave town. I will leave town and wait patiently for nine years and then make amends. Because now me and Jay Prince do it. You ever, uh, you ever had people want to fight you after the show? Because you don't really make a lot of shows about, you know, the people in it. But have you ever had somebody want to just be like, hey, man, you have to see me after this. Or I want to fight you here. No, nah, I prank called a nigga in Cleveland. And then a year later, he came to my show when I hit the town. That was crazy. And he came up to the uh, merch Ooh. table after the show when I was doing meet and greet. And he said, um, he wow. shook my hand and then pulled me in close. And he go... I'm gonna just let you know that I ain't tripping off that shit you pulled last year. <laughs> and I just came through tonight to let you know if I wanted to touch you, I, I could, could touch you. Ooh. Walked off. Wow. So, and that was over a prank call. Like, that's just a nigga that's just riled up. That nigga yeah, gotta yeah. be in jail by now. If you, yeah, 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 yeah. If you mad about a prank call and then you show up to my show a year after the fact, yeah. you're just an angry dude. Ain't nothing I can do to help you. 